Howdy folks, uh, welcome to another camera tutorial. So I've already loaded up the image since I've shown how to do that already. And I wanted to go with the concept that had a much more like extreme angle on it since the last few concepts I did didn't really require me to change the focal length. So I'm hoping this one is gonna make me do that a little bit more. And uh, yeah, let's just get started here. So I'm gonna get this into position since it's quite different than what I have. I'll probably go to this view first. And this camera is gonna be quite quite off. It's going to be pretty intense, uh, so it might be a little awkward. One thing you'll notice when you uh, have a camera view that's like quite rotated and you come back to 3D view, and it'll be on that same axis. If you hit one, you'll just neutralize it and you'll go back to your regular axis. I find it a little annoying, but it's not, it's not too bad. So I want to model this neutrally, again focusing on the knowns. So first thing I know is the sword is gigantic. And let's just raise this a little bit higher. And let's aim this. Okay, so if I go to 3D cursor and I make it global because I want this tilt to tilt backwards. So I can do this. This camera, I'm sure it's going to be underneath the uh, the ground, which is fine. And right off the hop, this is a very like extreme angle because I know the sword is like relatively even length all the way down. It's a pretty chunky blade. So let's right off the hop go to 35 because the higher this number is, the flatter your image will be. So considering the fact that this and this is like basically the same width, uh, maybe there's a slight taper. I gotta just look up gut sword on my on my other monitor real quick, uh, just to just so I know what I'm talking about here. But okay, yeah. So there's like a slight taper to it, but it's it's pretty minuscule. So let's just assume this is like relatively straight, and it is relatively. Um, lot flatter than that, of course. Let's just go for the full width of this blade. Um, I think what I'll do, just to make this a little bit easier as well, um, let's just kill all these faces, except for this middle one. And let's move this back. So these positions in edit mode are going to be relative to the pivot. So even if, like for example, my pivot is over here, and um, let's just make a yeah, cursor to 3D cursor. And I go to edit mode. And now when I go X, even though I know this is like aligned on the Y axis, it's still showing as being off because if I set it to zero, it's going to align to that point. So that's just something to be aware of um, when you are doing these things to like make sure you're zeroed before. If, if you if you want to take that method anyway for for setting that up. So OK, let's add a solidify to this. And I'm going to aim for the thickness of this chunk. And let's go from the center of it because I moved the blade to the middle. And now I gotta figure out the right depth. Okay, so let's go back to global view. Let's go back to 3D cursor. And yeah, Y is my backwards. And I just need to move this a little further back to make this match. This needs to be a little wider, a little further back. A teeny bit wider. Okay, that's looking. Actually, I should probably go thinner. I just realized because this white, this width is like wider than this point because this is this is pe this piece is over top. So let's do that. And then, honestly, this blade probably is a little bit higher. Let's go to medium. It's probably it's probably something like that. If you consider the blit, the handle is like this. It's, you know, it's probably something like that. Which. I imagine this image itself is also kind of exaggerated, but there may be potentially ways to get around that. Let's just match it for now. Okay, so if I go here, that's a little too extreme. Like, I know the taper is probably going to be more like this, and then the high point of the blade is like pretty squared off. Um, so I need to go even more extreme than what what I have here. So maybe I want to I want to lower this even more. So what I like to do when I'm not entirely sure what millimeter I should be using is I will name it first and then before I before I start changing it switch to my new camera and now let's try 20 just to see what that gets me okay erase all that and I can zoom this in more sometimes it helps to zoom in in a separate 3d viewport I'm also going to enable a wireframe so it's a smudge easier to see let's just drop the transparency a teeny bit okay so Let's change it back to 3D cursor and global. And I just want to try and get 
the blade to sit where I want it to. I feel like my overall uh, rotation in space is probably not entirely accurate either because the blade is kind of angled this way and then I'm kind of pointing a little bit more down. So let's just kind of rotate that until uh, I'm kind of aiming to have equal, have this equally poking out on both sides. That's looking pretty close to that. Page to median, so I'm not moving where it is. And I just want to match where that end point is. It is obviously too wide right now, but that's completely fine. Uh, let's change the position of this camera again. This is matching a little better. I might honestly, I might even want to go to 15. Uh, let's let's save this camera. Just because this isn't too bad. 25. And then let's try, let's try 15. This is probably going to be pretty extreme. And sometimes it's a matter of putting the model where you think it would go based on 3D view and then just like getting your camera to fit after that because there's a lot of um, subjectivity in how you place the camera. Just make sure I'm using the right one here. And I want to rotate some more. Still not quite long enough, and that's quite low. Um, I could probably extend it a tiny bit, honestly. Some iterations of this blade I'm seeing, like, they vary a teeny bit depending on who rendered it, so that's looking pretty closer. Also because of this angle being like so extreme and like the tip of the blade being like close to the corner of the concept, like what I was talking about last time, like the closer it is to the edge of the frame, the less accurate it becomes. So that's another aspect of it. Okay, let's try this again. But this part, even though it's a little time consuming to get this right, it's definitely worth it to spend that extra time just to make sure you're doing this part correctly so that um, you lay a good foundation for building in the future. Okay, and it almost looks like the views are a little at odds because in order to get the bottom to match more I would need to angle it even more and I can't really do that because of how high this blade is coming out so let's just do one last ditch effort to try and change the camera again so this is 15 duplicate that let's honestly let's go for seven make it really extreme and see if that's that's enough Yeah, it's starting to get too much because it's now it's starting to like this is this is when you know you've gone too far is like when it starts to really warp at the corners there because at this point it's so close that I think no matter how I position it it's like it's it's starting to get less and less accurate as I go so I think I've hit that point where um, seven is seven is definitely too far so like, we'll take that back uh, let's try fifteen again like fifteen is probably gonna be my safe spot because that's not where there's not too much um, distortion happening there, and it's still fitting this like relatively closely. And this is again assuming that I, if I didn't have any other concept and like I was only trying to model like from a quarter view, what would this look like? That's kind of what this is imagining. And honestly, we could probably even go a little thicker on this. I'm thinking because it is a pretty, it's a pretty beefy blade, so. back a little bit so it's at least centered and like the width of that is quite substantial I'm gonna push it even more just to see because it is starting to get like quite quite chunky by the top which is probably not probably not as what it would actually look like that's starting to look a little too wide so just to compromise We'll pull that back in a little bit but that might be the width of this piece so that's working decently well uh, I'll accept that okay so from this point uh, yeah I'm not sure if I want to really push this much further I could just a tiny bit but it's probably it's mostly the camera angle that's gonna do it and like you can tell like how extreme this angle is based on what you're looking at because in order to match it if you have to like make your 3d model go fully out of whack then it's probably not what's intended so I'm just going to guess a little bit. All right, so from here, I'm gonna say this is this is set up decently well. Let's just add 
first of all, this little cylinder, just a test. Handle will tell me as well if I'm how accurate I am. Okay, I mean that's good. Okay, so let's do three resolution. Again, I'll explain curves in a different lesson. Not really gonna go over it here. And I must pause this lesson. Hi folks, so this is going to be a continuation on building gut sword from before and setting up cameras. So I have decided to settle on the 15 millimeter. I think that's probably going to serve me the best. It's not fully matching the end of this blade, but there's a few reasons for that. One, A, this is from a manga, so clearly it's like exaggerated for the pose of this blade and it's not really meant as like concept art. And two, sometimes as modelers you don't get the most prospectively accurate art from design, so it's a lot of the time it's up to you to make the decisions of where you stray from the design and for what reason. So in this case I'm straying from the design because from the front orthographic view it's matching that sword quite accurately. So if you were to get more orthographic views from this it would probably look a lot more like what this is. So just gonna continue on here. So I got solidified. I'm going to Let's, uh, let's apply that. And then I'm going to trace uh, where I see this. Honestly, that's just slapping birds down. That seems like pretty accurate. Let's just scale that out a tiny bit for fun. And then make sure it's, it's the same at the top. So I'm going for somewhat equal distance. So I'm kind of looking at the distance here and just making sure I've got something similar on that side and that's looking pretty close just because I kind of have to guess. Like I said, I can't really rely on this end of the concept for, for it. And that's basically where it's thickest. Um, I, I'm going to assume there's a slight taper on this blade just because I find it odd if there is no taper whatsoever. So the best way to do that, I'll probably just grab these end two. Yeah, I'll just grab these whole, this whole chunk here. And I'll assume the taper is maybe something like that. It's probably pretty subtle if there is one. And then I'll put, run one more one, one, loop around. That's going to be like the outermost edge of my blade. I might even want to maybe even push that slight, slightly more. Just make sure actually that I'm set to median points. So I'm pushing from the center of these two guys. And then this is going to act as kind of like this white blade end piece right there. So let's just take these. And is it Y? Yep, Y. Scale that down. Let's go until it's pretty sharp. Probably like, I don't know, probably something like that, so I guess. And I'm just gonna have this go. First of all, let's change this to vertex mode. I just wanna have that go to the end, and this blade is probably symmetrical. I'm gonna assume. So let's just do that right away. So I don't have to focus on both sides. And now that that's even, I just want to make sure my scale is zero, and it is. So when I edge slide, it's all happening at the same rate. Honestly, I might just pull this in and push that out. And this is probably also symmetrical, so let's just get rid of that as well. That's working. Okay, cool. And then this will probably be better if it's in the corner. Make sure my auto smurge is on. If you merge when it's not, you can just go a distance. And sometimes if it's not sliding properly too, you might have to zoom out. And I'm going to turn my frame off so I can see that shape is working. Okay, that's working pretty good. Uh, I could go, uh, go like a, a smidgen, smidgen wider. As long as I'm sticking out on the amount of this wide and this side, and as long as they're like roughly the same, then we're getting, we're getting pretty good positioning for this. Uh, just for fun. Let's see if moving this camera would help at all. Uh, yeah, it does, it does, it does. Again, I kind of want to keep this in the middle. I am aware that the perspective is a little different, but okay, that works That works better, actually. Okay, uh, now let's make this, this round part. Why not? So let's do that with a, let's do that with a cylinder. And 32 around sounds, yeah, that's fine. Let's go with that. 90 degrees. Cut away these faces. I'll just make my own. I don't know, probably something, something like that. 
and then I can do this, that's cool. And I will also mirror this, so let's put this in the center, zero, mirror that. And it doesn't have a bottom, that's right, I need that. And yeah, straight, make sure clipping's on. And let's just bring this down a little bit, probably with, okay, I didn't really look at the scale of this, but that's fine. Um, I do want this to be centered on the blade. It's not quite centered in the artwork, but I feel like as long as it's fairly close. Okay, so one thing I do sometimes when um, stuff isn't matching where I think it's supposed to be. Yeah, because I don't really, if I move this over at all, it's not going to be centered. And I can almost guarantee this sure this blade is centered so let's not do that let's just chalk that up to because i also know this at this area of the image is like not terribly accurate so if we look at the drawing it's coming out a little bit further where the blade is or the, the end of the blade so mine could probably go a little wider and i feel like it's a little square right it's the middle saying something so when i can't match what i'll do is sometimes put it in position to match just because like these corners are a lot more square than what i have it's not nearly as round so let's just Honestly, you know what? This can also be mirrored. Let's just do that preempti or preemptively. Okay, and then pull it out, just match that. And that's matching that side a little better too. It is going a little over, but it's also a little under on that side, so that's matching pretty closely. We'll just shift that over. And that'll be off, but that's okay, because from this view, it's pretty accurate. And honestly, I think I went too far with this. Let's just pull this back a, a smidgen. And then from there, let's build... Okay, so there's this there's this bevel here, and there's this cut-in, but the bevel is not present in the cut-in. So I could go about that a few different ways. First of all, let's make sure I have enough width to bevel. And I probably need to honestly just make this a little higher, and then just pull it down a little bit. And yeah, you know what, let's just... Let's do the bevel first, why not? Let's see what happens. This is always a good time to like duplicate. Lock it off if you're not sure what you're not sure about your decision. If you want to go back to it, it's always a good way to go way to go about it. So grab this, that big chunky bevel is really only there. So let's just put it here. It's about that wide. And I'm actually gonna go for two segments. And I'm gonna change the shape to be a little bit concave, just a tiny bit. So now I've got this part. Again, I'm just going to shift this back so I can kind of get a better idea. But it's probably somewhere like in that in that realm. And it just kind of goes straight across, which, which tracks. So actually, instead of doing that, different idea. We're going to apply the mirror. And we're going to select everything except not that. That would be in phase one. Everything except these these faces. Um, let me just connect this real quick so it's not upset about it. It's easier to select things. Okay, there we go. So, select everything except for those faces. And, yeah, actually, I do want the bottom faces. I just don't want the ones that are on top. I'm just going to inset, and I'm going to go over that edge, but what I'm trying to do is just match the same width of the outside, because this is going to be like the starting point of this inset. So yeah, that amount is working, that's pretty good. And then I want to highlight this edge just visually, because I don't want to lose it, because I don't really need this one, or this one. Or most of these, to be honest. Um, we'll just near this so it's easier. And okay, so this is my the edge that I want to keep. Not that. I can reroute that a different way. Yeah, we'll just get rid of all that, honestly, because the resolution doesn't really match that inner part anymore. And I honestly don't really need that anyhow, so it doesn't super matter. And the back half is not matching. So let's just apply that as well. Okay, cool. So we got that. 
got that inner line. And I'm just gonna add one more. And it's pr it's pretty thick, so it's probably it's probably about that. We'll go with that for now. Um, I just need to add a few so that I can have something to draw across. And something like that. Probably one more this way, which could be this, and then this, and then this. Okay, so once I have these selected, another fancy blender modeling trick is if you edge slide with GG and you hit E or F, it'll automatically uh, align itself to the closest vert. So I can do that moving outward and it's going to be like roughly the same. It's just, it messes up a tiny bit in this corner, but that's okay, we can fix that. So if I just go straight through, uh, that will also help push into this diagonal a little bit more so that this becomes this whole loop. And now when I do that, it'll work a lot better instead of having that shape there, because that kind of messes it up. And I also want to space this out quite a bit. So let's go to edit the tools we talked about in a previous video. Space that out. And honestly, let's just do it. Why not? Let's do it, do it to both of them, just for fun. Okay, move that down. Honestly, I don't even need that resolution right now, but, um, eh, we'll leave it. it it's fine, it's fine. We'll just smooth that so it looks nicer. Okay, that works. And pull that over. Okay, so we got that shape. And now I want to push this in by the same amount. I have to decide, okay, so I can see the, the silhouette here. It's basically just another like inward concave shape. So let's do extra normals. Push that, actually, before I do that, apply the mirror. So I'm not gonna get a bunch of extra edges because that's kind of annoying. Uh, not that far, because it's gonna mess with the edge, so probably probably around there. It's not It's not that deep. It's like relatively shallow. Honestly, I could probably push a little bit more. Maybe I'll fix that edge. We'll see about it. Okay, so it's gonna be pretty concave. Um, I am just gonna manually do this, I think. It's kind of a, it's, it kind of suits the design anyway. So I'll just kind of shimmy this back and forth. I get a shape I like, and I don't need sharp on those edges. Okay, so this indent here is a little too exaggerated, so I kind of want to undo what's happening at that point. Probably the easiest way though is to push in, and then I can just kind of massage this around this corner so that it'll work a little bit better in this one space. And that'll kind of hide the fact that it's got that inset. Okay, so normals, turn this on. Uh, let's go with, yes, let's go to 50, let's go to 50, why not? Yeah, okay, that's, that's looking a lot more what I want. So that's good. Um, let's do these little, little circles on the bottom too, why not? So, I'm not gonna be able to match this at all because this is definitely where it's like quite off. So I'm just gonna have to make a decision. So if the handle is right here um, and this handle, I also don't wanna move in because it's it, it's in the center. Wait, hang on. Is it in the center? It's not, uh, yes. Oh yeah, no, this isn't in the center. I was like, what's, what's going on here? Okay, yeah, so this is definitely in the center. Um, so I don't wanna move that. I do see it now penetrates, but we're gonna figure that out after. Honestly, you know what? The easiest way to fix that, let's just, this, push this up a tiny bit. Yeah, just maybe even a bit more than that. It's just boop, boop. close enough. Um, okay, so I don't want to. I don't want to push this anymore. This width is like pretty good. Uh, let's just make that a little more accurate. So again, I'm kind of matching the same amount on both sides because again, could could do it this way. We kind of offset a little bit and then move it into position. So it's kind of something like that. Okay. Okay, so considering that's where the handhold is for this circle, it's like a pretty evenly, it's a little, there's a little more space on this side than on this side. So if I look at how much space I actually have, if I put a circle like here, you know, it's probably something. Okay, so first of all, reorient my, my view. And 
it's easier if I have one of these on either side. Just make sure I'm not moving anything I don't intend to. That's fine. Oops, not that. Okay, so bevel vertices. Bring that out. Uh, let's go to one here. Delete that. Bases. Yep, I did have that. Connect to these guys. Eight is always a very easy number to make a sphere out of. And then if you just relax that a few times. Let's go. Yeah, the width is pretty good. The location is decent. Um, if I just shift this over a tiny bit, then I have more space on this side than this one. So that's more in line with what I can see from the concept. So that works. And then we can just like push this up. And then I'm going to duplicate this off, make this a separate piece. And then that would probably get filled. And then it would be also pushed up. And honestly, it might even be like just a teeny, teeny bit smaller. And let's make this mirrored. Oops, not that, not that, not that. Go back. Faces. Mirror. Mirror. Cool. And then obviously this is not supported for subdivision uh, at, at this time. I would have to reinforce these edges, but that would work nicely. Okay, cool. So we got this. Um, honestly, this blade is, is very, very straightforward. Um, this is the basic shape for it. There's not really much else to do on it other than like reinforcing edges. Um, this type of texturing would probably be surfacing um, or like if you're sculpting this, you could, but like this is very easily surfaced. So I'm gonna ignore that detail. We're just gonna go down here. Let's make, I'll make this little guy, then I'll make the pommel and probably this thing and then we can call it. Okay, so let's look at, let's just make this little handle first. So if I got, uh, I got this and let's see, that's a decent, I got four resolution around. Yeah, that's fine. Normally just definitely whenever you have a curve and you're wanting, wanting to commit it to geo, just like make sure you check with wireframe and make sure like you can see how dense your object actually is that you're looking to convert. And I like to duplicate this off, put this into like an archive collection, um, which is what I should have done with this guy. And now I can convert, not, not mirror, mesh. And okay, so looking at this, they're at like, not even intervals, but they're like, you know, there's probably one here, this one, this one, this one. And I'm just kind of looking, because I'm, again, the angle of this is quite different. I would have to turn the camera more this way in order to match this handle. So I'm just gonna look at one area on the handle. So like this spacing, and I'm gonna use that for like my visual key for like where these um, little grips are. And I'm just gonna make them round. They could It could wrap around, but it looks like pretty horizontal from this view. So I'm just gonna pretend these go around. And honestly, that's pretty good. And there's kind of an extra one up there. I'm just gonna push these ones a little higher. Yeah, maybe, well, I don't know if I wanna go that high up there. Maybe something like that. Cause I wanna keep it like relatively evenly spaced. Um, sort of, maybe if I just pull these down a tiny bit. Okay, so if I make all of these little hand grippy things, um, I'm gonna easily select them by going to select, select similar sharpness because I've already marked them and honestly something like this is going to be pretty easy so let's just do an inset and probably honestly yeah let's just do that and then kind of pull these in I could do these at the same time but just for some extra variety I'll kind of do them individually so they're not all exactly the same sharp anymore. If I was going to subdivide it, um, I would add another loop on either side for all of these. And then, okay, so let's build this guy. So we've got four around and then it's another bevel. So honestly, just starting from a cube is probably the easiest. And it's definitely smaller top, probably like just wide enough to fit around this base. And then it looks quite a bit thicker here. Again, we're at the, at the end of the, or the edge of the image, so it's definitely not gonna match at all. But if I twist this forward in order for it to match, obviously it's gonna look really messed up in 3D view. So we're just gonna fill in the blanks mentally. And it's got, 
another thing here, and it kind of goes smaller. And then let's just grab these guys, make sure our scale is applied so that when I bevel it, it doesn't give me anything weird. And let's go to about here, let's do two. And it does look concave again with the flat being, or the bottom being pretty flat. And there's kind of like a little bit of a lip happening. So I might just inset this a tiny bit and pull this, pull this up. Boop, boop. Just, just a smidge, cause there's just like a teeny, teeny little bit. And there's a little ribbon thing, which honestly I, I don't feel like making. So I'm not going to, but maybe another time I'll do a, I'll do a cloth thing. Uh, let's just make this, this little thingy which is pretty straightforward. So um, I like to start with the cube when doing sphere things, just so you can get that nice square um, proportion. It's good for surfacing if you don't have a cylinder or if you don't have like the, you know, this thing. If you don't have this thing, it's better for surfacing. Okay, so that's, Pretty small and flat. Okay, so now in terms of doing the actual chain, um, I pretty much always make chain lengths the same way, which is to start with a bezier circle, flip this sideways, and pull this in, and grab, pull that out a teeny bit, not that far, grab these. those up a teeny bit, something like that, and then let's add some thickness to it. We got a chainy thing. Definitely too big though, so let's just kind of push this to position and guess here a little bit. Yeah, that's that's actually that's pretty accurate. Okay, it's definitely not gonna be positioned right there though, because this should be over here. So this would definitely be like more over. And then there's just honestly like a little little half ring thing. And honestly, that's that's probably a little high resolution for what that is. Let's just drop that a little bit. And this just looks like honestly just a regular circle. So let's just do that, do that, do that, do that. That far. It's probably like well, it's, it, it is like a little slanted. Uh, honestly, it's probably something like this, and it looks fairly chunky. So I might need to beef this up a little bit. But yeah, that's looking closer. Honestly, whoop, not what I wanted. Even more might be the answer. And then it looks it looks fairly pushed in. And then this is probably gonna go somewhere like that. And I can even, I might, honestly, if you were doing a prop for production, uh, you would probably do it like this because uh, you would want it neutral for rigging and then they would just put a control on this and animation could move it instead of having it at pose by default. So I'm just gonna put that straight down because that's technically what you would do in production. And yeah, that, that works pretty good. From this point, I would just reinforce edges so that I could apply subdivision, but the core geometry is in place and yeah, that's a sword. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, like and subscribe if, if you like what I'm doing. And and uh, and watch more videos. Okay, bye, bye people. See ya. And come back to it. So, good day. Part two, coming up.